the big name. He's I I still remember this one picture because it's hilarious of him dunk, like slam dunking the pill and it literally says dunk the drug. I'm like that's not even a sentence anyone would say. Yeah. But once you find out that it was supposed to be called the drug, now it makes sense. Um, <clears throat> the kids purposely this actually bugged me. The kids purposely chose to create new characters rather than simply fit their well-known characters into the movie's plot. The recurring, to incre- the recurring characters from the show that do pop up are less famous ones. That did kind of bug me. Because... I think their most famous characters that are in the movie are maybe the cops? The cops, I think, yeah, are pretty yeah. much the only ones. Um, like, the white trash couple, kind of. Kind of. But, and, and the, the cab queen. driver. And the queen. the queen. The cab driver, not so much, because he was only in the first season, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but the queen. The queen, definitely. Yeah. Um, but again, cameo. Like, you... And we'll we'll probably talk about it a little bit after, but Death Comes oh, cancer to Town. Boy. That cancer boy, but he was only in one one sketch. He's memorable though. <laughs> well, definitely. Um, but like the Death Comes to Town, which we'll get to what the hell that is in a minute. They actually did a smart move where they actually had this one scene where it was just a revolving group of people coming in to like audition or something like that, and it was just a shit ton of characters from the show coming yeah. back. That was how they should have done it. And I think there that was this no could have crushing your head. Guy. Yeah, there was no cabbage. Like head. I feel like no... they could have done that in the placebo scene. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like when they're when they're testing the drug out, they could have easily done that, but they chose not to, which I didn't quite like, and I think might have actually hurt the film a little bit. That small. Um, this is kind of funny. Mark McKinney's character, Don Rorder, the head of the drug company, is based on producer Lorne Michaels. No shit. Flat out. There's yeah. no like he he's kind of he's no. doing Lauren Michael. People who clear, clearly didn't read the credits were upset that they could make fun of him like that. <laughs> he produced the movie. I think he was okay with it. Um Kevin, you know, Mark, I don't yeah. think I talk like I don't like think that. I talk like that. <laughs> no, he does talk like that. This is one of the best impressions of Lauren Michaels there ever was. Like, the only one who could probably do a better one mm. was in an Austin Powers movie. Yeah. Yeah. And the only reason why people don't get on fucking Mike Myers' nuts is because Dr. Evil's bald and, like... Yeah. He doesn't... Because Mark McKinney's Dawn <laughs> looks <laughs> like Lord He's Lauren also Michael. looking like Lord Michael. So that's first. what... Yeah, Dr. Evil's a little different. Yeah. Um, Kevin didn't like being the main character. He was sort of pressured into it, saying... Because my guess is it was probably supposed to be Dave. Uh, I felt great pressure playing the lead. It took away what I do best, which is being really silly around the main person. Yeah, because he's not... He's not that guy. He's not like, lead guy. No, like, Kevin there's... is the guy who plays around everyone. Like, this role, you can tell, was written for Dave. Like, Dave is all is always the straight man. Like, always. When we get to the Monty Python movies, mm-hmm. and trust me, we will, because yes. Kids in the Hall to him is Monty Python to me. Fair enough. They knew mm-hmm. who the man was. They knew yeah. it was going to be Graham, mm-hmm. and only because yeah. out of all of us, he's the actor. Yeah, exactly. And it's the and same. And in this troop, it's it's Dave because Dave. Cause he's Dave the actor. Hell, that's how Dave ended up on fucking news radio. Was him playing the straight man in that chicken lady sketch, the very famous one where you know he's on the date with her. Yeah, and he's ba- being as straight as possible. He doesn't freak out until the very end. That's what he does. But they, I guess, because Dave, you know, kind of quit. And they had to do it. Like they gave it to Kevin, and Kevin's like, "I don't, I don't want to do that." Um, the only time you see me alive in the movie is when I play the dad, and that the dad character is one of yeah. my favorite. Like, I, I guess it could have been Mark, but he was too busy being Don. Yeah, that's so, the other problem. It would have been Mark if he didn't, if they didn't need him to do the mm-hmm. main, I guess, yeah. antagonist of the film. Kind of, yeah. Um, so we mentioned it, Cancer Boy. Reprised from the final episode of the TV show, in a sketch that satirized the idea of being as offensive as possible. Did you see? Did, Did you, you see? see? The doctor in me? Uh, <laughs> many found the character to be in exceedingly poor taste. <laughs> oh, no shit! <laughs> Paramount Pictures fought extensively with the troupe to cut the offending scenes. Did we not have the no character avail. of Cancer Boy? Um, apparently, you had to. Because... Can you not call him Cancer Boy? <laughs> They dug in their fucking heels, and they kept them in. Because you fight for shit like Mm -hmm. that. The group has expressed some regret over the position years later, feeling that the battle left Paramount bitter and reluctant to fully market the film. No shit. Not, not... I love this, like, the cancer boy. It's like, not the Scott Thompson character that, for no reason, is in blackface. (laughs) 
<laughs> that character does not to need to be yeah. what they are. I don't know why. Because that's I not just, a character in the movie. No. They're in a scene. Yeah. And he's just in and blackface. And they're gone. Yeah. Like, there's no need for that character, but he, nobody talks about that scene. Well, because weirdly enough, and it's weird to say this, because this sentence is going to come out wrong no matter what I say is, it was more okay to do blackface because the kids in the hall had done blackface in the past. Oh, well, Mark McKinney's one of his most famous characters. Yeah, was he was uh, he's the, the Mississippi Gary. Yeah. Uh, but he also, weirdly enough, he also did blackface again because they did a satirized sketch of Bruce as a woman bringing home black mark to his to her family for the first time and them reacting to it so and he was in blackface it was just a thing they did because again they like none of this is okay it's not but they did it out of necessity but it was a little more acceptable i mean it was not okay like nobody looked at it and went oh that's fine like the kids in the hall were purposely trying to be offensive in a lot of things and that never changed at all Suffice to say, we will not be covering Soul Man on this show. No. Um, ironically, though, Death Comes to Town is probably the only CBC show that has come in it. Because there's a scene in Death Comes to Town where there is a shot where there is cum on the dude's fucking shirt. Well, that's Kids in the Hall. Because that's Kids in the Hall. And I do remember uh, our, our friend, uh, past and future guest Aaron, him and I both applauding, going, fucking Kids in the Hall, <laughs> well did done. it again. Well done. Because that's what they do. Um... Anyways, back to this film. Two endings were filmed, with a relatively more upbeat conclusion making the final cut. In the alternate version, which I liked, Dave Foley plays a crazed activist who leaves a militant movement against Gleeminex. Chris Cooper, unable to cope with the mayhem his drug has created, decides to take it himself and ends up lapsing into a coma. The unused ending has not been fully released, but it leaked. But a leaked work print was widely traded among fans on the internet during the late 1980s. Look it up; it's on YouTube. Well, hell, you can't even get the movie now. The no. movie's out of print. The movie's out of print, so... which is why it's on YouTube. Yeah. Because um, if no one gives a shit, that's where it goes. Um, ironically, that's why Dogma's on YouTube as well. Hmm. But that's for a very different reason that I don't want to talk about on this podcast. I'll tell you off mic. Um, cause that opens up a whole can of worms that I don't want to touch. Uh, according to McDonald, everyone with the exception of McKin- McKinney contemplated quitting the troop. He really, Mark McKinney seems to be like the fucking rah rah guy of this whole thing. Contemplated quitting the troop during the shooting of this movie. We were all going through our own hell to get the movie done. The smallest things seemed bigger. He says, we were all crazy. Scott came back from Larry Sanders and was unhappy about some cuts we'd made to the script. While he considered quitting, I went to the bathroom and almost threw up. I thought, it's not worth it. Wives are leaving you, friends are yelling at each other, I should quit. We should all quit. But I came back in, Scott and I talked, and we wrote a great scene. Kids in the Hall didn't sound like fun, and it doesn't sound like fun. Um, uh, which is again, why they don't get together To very draw often. a parallel to Monty Python. Yeah. Uh, I think... Eric Idle mm-hmm. is the Mark McKinney where he's mm-hmm. he'll be the one always up for it always always up for it. yeah and the other guys are just like Ugh, how much does it pay yeah it's it's yeah <laughs> I mean the kids in the hall aren't now, at that level because there's a difference between kids in the hall and yeah. Monty Python when Monty Python came back mm-hmm. they were playing the O2 Arena yeah. sold out I mean now to their credit kids in the hall did sell out the venue for two year, two days straight in Toronto which is great but they're not playing the fucking O2 no you know. Because they were never as big. Um, it's unfortunate. They were just as good. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, personally, I like them yeah, better. Which is fine. But that's my personal. A, as it's 1A and 1B. It's 1A yes. and 1B. Yes. It's just uh, kind of which one do you prefer. Yeah. You know? And that's how it is. Um, where are we going? Uh, okay, Mark. so this is the end of the movie talk. So let's go back to what the kids in the hall were up to. Uh, cooler heads prevailed by the end of production. Everyone, including Dave, decided to stay together. However, after the disappointing box office of this movie, they basically broke up and didn't get back together until they began a live tour until 2000. So it was, I mean, it was really only four years, but still. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, like was still... It was 99, 2000. That's yeah. when, um, what's it called? Tour... Mm. Yeah, it was Tour Duty. Yeah, Tour Duty. Um, yeah, that was in 2000 they did that. They did, uh, they put out two DVDs for that. They actually did a documentary called Same Guys, New Dresses, and they did a, um... Uh, they put out in 2002. They put out a filmed version of the live show um, called Tour of Duty. Yeah. Um, 
great, great stuff, by the way. Um, it's everything you want it to be. It's just a shit ton of classic stuff from the show. Them doing it live, which they've always said is their strong suit, and having seen them do it live twice, it really is. They're fucking amazing any, in I front of a live show. In front of a live any, audience. Any, like, solid sketch group? Mm-hmm. Will always be better live. If they start live. If they start, if they live. start live. If they if they start live and go to TV, it's always going to be a transition. And the Kids in the Hall did say that. Like, their first season was them learning how to write sketches for TV because they mm-hmm. had no idea. And if you watch it, it's a little, it is a little shaky. It's also weird to see TV shows go live. Yeah. Like, Trailer Park Boys and yeah. Letter Kenny have yeah. both gone live. Now, I've heard it's great. Sure. Like, if you're fans of the show, you're going to love the live show. But that's yeah. always weird to me. It's just like, you're going to take these characters from TV. Yeah. Because it's not like a sketch. It's not like... You're going to go on stage and be this character. Everyone knows this character. Okay, off the stage. Oh, back. Right. This character now. It's always just like, well, you're just the same character for an hour? Doing... Yeah, it's 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 really, it is really awkward to watch. Yeah. It's not like, because it, it's not like a play because they're not theater actors. No. They're just doing the show and it's a little That's why it makes off-putting. more sense for the kids in the hall. Exactly. Um, in 2007, they got together to perform at the Just for Last Festival in Montreal, followed by a tour in 2008, which was the first time I saw them. I wish I went to those. I'd, I've never seen them live. Mm. If they ever, if they ever, ever, they probably will do another show live well, on there. I mean, there's rumors. Well, I'll get to that. Let me talk, and we'll get to the, right before the end. We'll talk yeah. about that. Uh, in 2010, they produced an eight-episode miniseries entitled "Death Comes to Town" that aired on the CBC. We've mentioned it before. It was really good. Uh, there is a DVD that exists of it. In fact, you can actually buy uh, the new set that is available at Walmart and on Amazon, which is like the complete Kids in the Hall. The set I bought. Has everything. Yeah, that's the um, set I bought. I bought all this shit fucking individually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I feel like a chump, but yeah, yeah, you can buy everything in one shot, which has everything. It's the set I bought, which yeah. is really good. Mm-hmm. It has like literally the HBO pilot, which I had to buy separately. Death Comes to Town. I, it doesn't have Tour of Duty or Same Guy's no. New Dresses. I, had to, I do own those. Those are way the fuck out of print. Yeah. But if you can find them, I highly recommend them. Especially, I kind of uh, wish they threw brain candy into that set, but that's... nobody's producing that yeah. anymore. Um, that's just one of those things where, like, we're just going to forget it happens. Download Although, it off of YouTube. On same guy's new dresses, they do talk about it, and they're like, when they were getting together, like they're in the middle of the tour, they they sat down together, and they're just like, okay, do we want to continue as a troupe? What do we yeah. want to do? Do we want to do another movie? Whatever, and nothing came of that. Until that Death Comes to death Town, movie. eventually, you know, ten years later. Um, they have toured a few times over the years since. They also reunite seemingly whenever possible on any projects any single one of them is involved in. Especially Dave. If Dave's involved, usually you can assume three or more kids are going to show up. It's just kind of how that Because you got to get Dave. Yeah. Um, Dave's the difficult one. He kind of is. He kind of is, but usually, yeah, that's the idea is you get it. Or you do it on a show that he's on. Because the other guys will pretty much do anything because they don't care, um, but yeah. So, but um, yeah. Then I saw them. I saw them again during that that second tour thing um, as a surprise from Aaron for my birthday one year. He didn't even tell me until we actually showed up at the venue, and I happened to look up and I'm like, "Are we seeing kids in Hollywood?" He goes, "Yep." I'm like this is fucking <laughs> awesome. Um, best surprise I ever had. Uh, but recently there have been talks between the kids and Lauren Michaels about possibly. Doing another sketch show, possibly for Netflix. Kind of the way with Bob and David did. Just a short run of a few episodes. And it probably won't be called Kids in the Hall. Just no, it like, could be. It could be, but they, just like with Bob and David, wasn't called Mr. Show. Yeah, but they didn't own that name. The Kids in the Hall owned the Kids in the Hall. Um, they the it's It's been talked about as recently as November of 2018. Right. Um, which isn't that long ago. It's, it's only like, you know, the only eight months, thing but... I know that they're doing right now mm-hmm. is I know Scott is doing his own Buddy Cole one man show. I think that's actually done. And Kevin is doing a writing for sketch comedy, like, I don't know, like a seminar. Yeah. So we'll like see. A, I think we'll see. We'll, you know, I mean, stopping they're them, never, like, you know, 2020, 2021. Put it you know, this way. They're all around. They're all still alive. They're it's never like, you know. they're never too far away from each other. Again, and that's what it is. Not like Monty Python, where yeah. they're all in their like sev- yeah, 60s no. and 70s. Like, no. They're they're all roughly 50. You know. Um, and again, they're never far away from each yeah. other. Like they they don't they know where they came from. They know you know, a lot of them they they actually all of them now at this point don't run away from it. Like Dave tried to distance himself a little bit. 
well, as he said, like well, that he was, was little, in, he was on, he was in, yeah, he was trying space. to be a thing, but now he's just like, no, like my lasting impression on this world is going to be kids in the hall and I'm fine with it. And it's something are. to be proud of. Yeah, it really is. Um, like truthfully, mm-hmm. um, as you know, as I'm sure his movies were good.